Hey guys, on this episode of Talk About Games, we're doing something a little different. We're talking about a console. And we're starting with one of my favorites, the original Sony PlayStation. It's the transition between retro and modern games. This is like the bridge, it's the missing link. And I think a lot of that has to do with going from 2D to 3D, going from, you know, systems where it's cartridge based, you turn it on, the game starts right away. There's no loading. There's nothing like that. Um, well, that's interesting. You're saying it's like the missing link between retro and modern is not also the Nintendo 64 because that was the tra Nintendo's transition to 3D. Yeah, and it, it, it's interesting that Nintendo and Sony kind of came at the the problem from two different directions. The the PlayStation's not a very powerful system. Um, the, the advantages that it, that, it, that it does have is it was more suitable for 3D than, than the Saturn. But compared to the N64, I mean, I think that the 3D games on the N64, whether it's Mario 64 or Ocarina of Time or anything like that, even though they don't have the storage capacity that the PlayStation has with the CD, I feel like they, they're much smoother playing better 3D games. But then you have titles on PlayStation like Vagrant Story, which is a later PlayStation. I, it depends title. what games you're talking about. If you're talking about like the top tier, like yeah. Ocarina of Time, Mario, then yeah. But there was a lot of you know great examples on the PlayStation, and then there's a lot of terrible. Like if you're gonna compare, you can't compare Ocarina of Time to The Crow or something. Right. Like, there's got to be a fair comparison here. Yeah. It's just those, those, first, those first party Nintendo titles are really great examples of just really solid control when it comes to 3D. But then on the PlayStation, I feel like the PlayStation excelled more because it had the CD drive, it had the full motion video. I mean, and I was talking, I was talking about like the, the later Square games, whether it's a game like Parasite Eve, which has great full motion cutscenes, or a game like Vagrant Story, which has great 3D graphics for a PlayStation 1 game. Um, you, you know, that's where PlayStation 1 really excelled, was was in having the, these massive games. I remember playing PlayStation as a kid and being like, okay, a Super Nintendo game, I mean, we play them on Mike and Ryan, we could beat a Super Nintendo game in a few hours. Mm -hmm. We can play uh, Star Fox in, in, in an afternoon and do a whole video on it, but then we, we go to play something on PlayStation. You can't, we can't go through Final Fantasy VII and play through the entire game in, in one day, so it's hard to do those type of games, and that's where the transition started to happen when you started to get to uh, PlayStation era games and beyond. Before the PlayStation, we would take a cartridge over a friend's house, and that cartridge would have our game. Right. It would have the save, it would have everything. Right. The game didn't have a save, whatever. Here, this is the first time I remember taking the memory card over friend's house, sticking it in, and playing the game, and then going home and continuing okay. that same game. On the back here, there's this parallel I.O. port. Why I think this port is interesting is this is the port that the Game Shark went into. Okay. So if you were doing uh, Game Shark, you were doing like the, uh, the cheating, like Game Genie. It plugged in here, which is pretty weird. And also, this is the uh, SCPH, uh, I think it's seven, yeah, 7001. And this one, you can see in the back, it has the AV multi out port and the serial IO out. But the original one of these actually had the three, you know, the, the red, white, yellow well, on the it. The one I remember that was like, it was just like round. You remember that one? It's the one James had, actually. It was just like white and it was like around. Yeah, that's like, the PS1. I didn't own it because I had just gotten the uh, Nintendo 64 and I was playing through those games. And I did have friends that had the PlayStation and I would check I would check them out. And I, I, I felt the same way I felt about the Genesis growing up in, in that I thought that the PlayStation was the adult console. You know, Genesis tried to, to say, oh, Super Nintendo is the kiddie console. Yeah, I should, I should back up that comment. Place, Not that I believe Genesis was yeah. the adult console, just that that's the way it was marketed. But PlayStation, you really started to see uh, differentiation in titles. Because again, you had you know these bigger experiences on the discs. You had you know games like, like Siphon Filters and your Final Fantasies and your Medal of Honors and stuff like that. And the, and the, the players who played them, you know, being on the PlayStation more. And then the PlayStation 2 made it made it more so, and the, it just kept going. It was a very conflicting period for me because 
I grew up with the NES, and I knew the Castlevania games to be like on mm -hmm. there, and the, the Final Fantasy games to be on Super Nintendo. And then you got a Castlevania game on the Nintendo 64, which wasn't very good, the Castlevania 64. And then you go to PlayStation, it's like, oh, well, PlayStation has the good Castlevania game. It's like, oh, shit. Hmm. You know, like, you know, what, the good the good Castlevania game isn't on Nintendo anymore? Oh, oh, Final Fantasy 2 II and 3 that I played on Super Nintendo. Oh, now all the Final Fantasy games, like Final Fantasy VII, all these other ones, they're all on PlayStation. It was very, like, conflicting, because growing up, you love Nintendo, right. and now all these franchises that you loved are all going to a different system, and it was kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, and even though the games were shit, there was, like, Contra that was on PlayStation. And I say that because you also like, got to remember, as adults... Yeah. We can we can buy the consoles we want, but at that time I couldn't afford to get a PlayStation and and an, like I, you had one or the other. Remember when if you wanted to buy like Chrono Trigger or something, it's like seventy dollars. Mm. All of a sudden you have a system that has CDs that are cheap to manufacture. They're manufacturing them for a dollar or less, and then you have Nintendo who's manufacturing these cartridges and they're expensive. But problems come from that. Yeah, it allowed them to make three disc and four disc games that have all the full motion and all of that stuff. But it also brought piracy. And one what, what of the things that I, I saw with the PlayStation was there was a lot of kids I knew growing up who had the mod chips. Mm. And I, and you know, mod chips aren't as common in these days as they were back then, but basically you could pop open your PlayStation and there was like, different versions of mod chips for different PlayStation versions. And what you would do is you would take a chip and you would solder it to certain places on the circuit board. Mm -hmm. And then that would bypass the copyright protection so that you could put a burn disc in here or a disc that wasn't for your region and you could so, play. So then you could just play any game you wanted. Exactly. Yeah. So like I knew kids that had binders and binders and binders of games that they got off the internet because the internet was coming into yeah, play right. at this point sure um or they had a friend who would like rent them and burn them and the mod chips i mean the mod chips broke your system your system would overheat there'd be problems like i mean there were some good ones but there was a lot of bad ones mm -hmm. um well, one thing that I liked about the PlayStation was the fact that the games came like this in the jewel yeah. cases, and they're very, uh, they're not very big, they're just like, reg you know, they're like CDs, so so they were good as far as storage goes. Now, these days, you don't have to worry about it with Steam and everything, you just download games, but, uh, but at that point, uh, they, they, were, they were nice because you could store them, where Nintendo 64 at the time uh, sucked because it came in those cardboard boxes and even like if then you you know the cardboard boxes stunk because then you want to take the, the games out and then if you're just gonna put the games on the shelf they didn't have the end labels and then they also were they had that rounded mm -hmm. edge they didn't sit on the shelf very well so they, they were really bad as far as storage goes where PlayStation um, I think that that was a big aspect of, of one of the things that was really good about it yeah, absolutely. as far as the games. So, the PlayStation is also interesting because I don't know many systems that had two main controller designs. This controller, the controller that you know we're still dealing with today, almost, you know, with very little different. The DualShock. The DualShock was a big deal because it was made in response to 3D gameplay. It has the two analog sticks on it, like that. But the original PlayStation controller doesn't have the DualShocks. The original PlayStation controller is just, it's just like a Super Nintendo controller with arms <laughs> on the back of it, yeah. you know, to hold. And these came later. Another thing that's awesome about the design of the PlayStation is, look, the, the power supply is, the transformer is embedded in it. Oh, uh, so there's it no just, box? It just has the power cable, okay. which is really cool. And that's why the Xbox One S is so much better. I just thought of something that I love about this, actually. Okay, yeah. you see this system right here? And I, I just thought of this. <laughs> um, you know you know what I fucking hate about the PlayStation 4? And I like the PlayStation you 4. You can't see the buttons. They're like... Look at this power button. Here you go. Look at that power button. Look at that. If that is a button. You can just hit that and turn <laughs> the system on. That's like going back to... That's one of the things I loved about the Atari 2600. You flip a switch, the thing's on. The NES, there's a nice big button on it. Boom, turn the system on. I hate this, like, oh, where's the, oh, I can see that microscopic red dot. It's like, <laughs> let me, like, it's, ho that's horrible. Yeah. 
Yeah, you press it down, it goes down. There's a big light that says it's like on. Like, you can, you can see what you're doing. There's, yeah. like, the open thing is, like, you just open it up. It slowly opens. It's beautiful. This is a great <laughs> system. Um, the, the lasers went on these systems, though. That was yeah. something you had to worry about. Like, coming from... That's a big problem with the original Xbox. Coming from the NES, coming from the Super Nintendo, coming from the Genesis, these systems are... If you clean these systems, they're indestructible. Indestructible systems. This thing, I remember having uh, like have it upside down and mm. stuff because the lasers just crap. On the PS One, I loved the the RPGs from SquareSoft and other companies. Whether it was Konami with uh, the Suikoden series, or it was your Final Fantasies. You know, there were three Final Fantasies on this system. Uh, mainline Final Fantasies. There was games like Final Fantasy Tactics, which I don't think we've seen. A tactics game as great as Final Fantasy Tactics since. I really liked games like Twisted Metal. I liked Jet Moto. I liked those like competitive sport combat games like that. But, oh, I really liked Gran Turismo and Gran Turismo 2. Those were fun. I thought that those games were amazing and they were finally an accessible simulation. You know, I was just getting up to the years where I was thinking about getting my driver's license, you know, right. and being able to see all the cars and play them. I really thought that was great. I don't know how how that would be going back at this point to like Gran Turismo one and two, but I remember playing them later. Those games were always renowned for how awesome the graphics looked. The cars yeah. always looked really realistic, and I always thought that that, that was really cool. But I liked playing. Um, I, those were more of like driving simulators. I was always more of a fan of like the more unrealistic games. Like I liked Burnout Three Takedown because mm -hmm. it was more like you could crash into cars and do like really ridiculous stuff like that. Well, the Burnout series, I think, started on PlayStation. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah they, they did. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm saying that those are great games that I liked. The original top-down Grand Theft Auto and Grand Theft Auto 2 are on PlayStation. They're really good. You start seeing shooters that have, like, lineages going up to today. Stuff like Medal of Honor. Metal Gear Solid. The Metal Gear games that were on NES aren't that great. No, they're, they're, they're nothing compared they're not, to yeah, Metal Gear good. Solid. Yeah, there's an AVGN episode about Metal Gear on NES. Also, like, a lot of mega franchises started on PlayStation. I think one of the most iconic ones was Resident Evil. Resident Evil spawned feature films and arcades and a million that's versions. That's probably the biggest thing, that and Final Fantasy to come out of yeah. this. Yeah. Um, Something that, you know, I played a lot of uh, when I went back to start playing the PlayStation games, and one of the reasons I, I got it originally was, you know, I'm a big fan of the Mega Man games, mm -hmm. and going back and playing Meg, I wanted to continue, because I had already played Mega, you know, all the X games, X2, the Super, Super Nintendo games, so I wanted to play the rest of the X series, mm -hmm. so I remember playing uh, X4, X5, and X6, and I think I gave up after that because I was like not too into and it. And Mega Man 8. But yeah, Mega Man 4 loved for the system. Because the system had the CD, it really brought the rhythm games to the forefront. So you can't forget um, Parappa the Rapper and Um Jammer Lammy, which are both like, you know, Parappa the Rapper kick punch, it's all in the mind. You know, there's like Was that just with the regular controller? Or it's just with there, the controller. There was a different, okay, um, I haven't played those. And then, you know, in Japan it was bigger, of course, but the Dance Dance Revolution and Beat Mania series. On this one, there was the original Dance Dance Revolution, which had a lot of music from like Third Mix and stuff like that in the original. Then there was the Dance Dance Revolution uh, Kona Mix, which is like the best Revo Dance Dance Revolution on PlayStation and the uh, Dance Dance Revolution Disney mix. <laughs> so those are the three that came out for this and they're and they're all pretty good. I like the puzzle games on the system like Intelligent Cube and Devil Dice and oh, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I used to have Devil Dice. Like Street Fighter to me felt was more of like a Super Nintendo Genesis thing. Yeah, I would play Street Fighter and Street Fighter 2 Turbo on Super Nintendo, but I also played it at that time. I was actually playing that in the arcade and Mortal Kombat. Um, so yeah, I would agree with that. That, but yeah. I got my puzzle fix, my Street Fighter fix. I'm sorry, from uh, Super Puzzle Fighter, which was out on this, where you have to match the gems. Okay, I haven't yeah. played that. But, and actually. then they and then they like throw Hadoukens at each other oh, and okay. stuff. That's funny. It has like Dan in it and stuff like that. Oh, I, I haven't played that. It's pretty good. Yeah. Later in the system's life, life, you saw, you know, you, you know, I can't, I can't talk about it enough. Games like Vagrant Story that start looking like PS2 games. You start seeing them really master the medium because there's games early on in the system's life 
that look like total crap in 3D. If it's like Lemmings 3D or Cyber Sled, those games looked awful compared to what came towards the end. Where I think the system suffers is in like platforming. There's very few platformers, like like Gex didn't do it for me. Like uh, Gex, Croc, Ape Escape, uh, Crash Bandicoot yeah. is one that people like. All of those games are okay, but they're not Mario 64. No. They're not Banjo-Kazooie, they're not DK64. There's like, if you were playing platformers, 3D platformers, like, I and, and I may get beat up for this, because the PlayStation did have them, like I said, the Crash Bandicoots and stuff like that. The PlayStation, could not hold a candle to those games. I I I I think that 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 is the hole in the PlayStation library, and that's why you need an N64. And GoldenEye is way more advanced than the shooters you got on this platform. Okay. That that's where I think the weaknesses are. But again, there's a million games I do like on PlayStation. Right. So you were talking about uh, the transition period between retro to modern, and right. this is basically right in the middle. This is kind of when that happened. Mm -hmm. When I played uh, GameCube, I would play like Super Monkey Ball. Those monkeys, they were in a ball. They were in a sphere. Right. Like the PS2, those systems, they could actually make round shapes. Right. Or, or things that resembled being round. Um, the PlayStation and the N64, everything looked like a polygon, mm -hmm. and that, uh, and I'm not just talking in retrospect, when they came out, I felt very uh, resistant to both of the systems uh, because everything looked like a polygon. It's something I've never really gotten over. Whenever I go back and I look at uh, games from the PlayStation era or uh, the N64 games, I just think, oh wow, everything looks like a polygon. I just always thought the games didn't look very good. Look at Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII has super polygonal, right. super awful looking stuff. Yeah. But then it's got the pre-rendered stuff that brings it back. True. Yeah. Right. King's Field. You ever play King's Field? No, I didn't. Oh, King's Field is a fun time if you like <laughs> like gigantic walls of polygons <laughs> like in front of you. Um, oh, and that was the other one that came like like Mega Man Legends was on. Yeah. Here. And like again, that's like. You know, I was used to what I was used to, right. like Mega Man X and stuff like that. And then you play that, and it's just like all these polygons, and just like, what is this? Yeah, it's it's a big step from what I'm trying to say is it's a big step from Star Fox to Grand Theft Auto V. There's like yeah. a huge jump, you know. Mm. But overall, I feel like the Sony PlayStation was a landmark console. It changed the video game industry so much. It was the first stepping stone to go from, you know, this cottage industry for kids, this kind of little sideshow to uh, an industry that's now bigger than motion pictures. Mm. And, you know, the budget started getting bigger. There was voice acting started. So many things that make modern gaming possible started with the PlayStation, and that's why, you know, it's important, and that's why I, I thought we should talk about it. This conversation is really making me want to play Symphony of the Night. I can yeah, that. right? Oh, there is one thing that I do want to mention, and that's that when you stick, this was the first system I remember, that when you stick the disc in and you turn it on, it does the, like, PlayStation, like, do -do 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 -do, you know, like oh, the sound, yeah, yeah. and it comes up. People put in their audio setups because it had an amazing CD player. Oh, like it was yeah. like super high end. Yeah, it was that point where people were like using this as a fucking CD player. <laughs> yeah. No, they exactly. did though. They did. They right? Did, yeah. It had the last gun games with the gun con. Oh yeah. There you go. And the gun con was awesome. It plugged into the video out. Mm -hmm. So it was plugged right into the video stream. That's cool. And the gun con was awesome. Games like Point Blank, games like so, Time crisis. So you're always good with the NES and telling me about the flickering and all that kind of shit. Yeah. So you probably know where I'm going to go with this. So NES gun games, you'd have to have like a CRT TV or you use the TV I have now, yeah. the PVM. But um, with this, could you no. do the gun games no. on a flat screen? No. 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 Nope. No? No. 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 So no. You can't. No, 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 no. 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 Okay, so no. You cannot. Yeah. No. Yeah. What are so wait, what are the gun games? Like though? like point blank? You ever play point blank in the arcade? It's the one where like there's In like the a, arcade? Yeah. Point, so there's they had this there's on like three or four point blank games for those. Oh, I wanna play that. Yeah. For the gun con. 
Okay. Uh, there's Elemental Gear Bolt, which is like a RPG. That, that I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, time Crisis. Yeah, I you know, know with time the crisis. step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Um, so I guess I played more of the gun stuff. Than I had. Yeah. But wait, these all came from the arcade, though, right? A lot of them. So maybe I. But they're yeah. they're they're console versions. They're different. Right. Revolution X. Okay. Well, I know Revolution. Yeah, <laughs> Revolution X. Yeah. X. Shooting the shooting uh, the Area Fifty One. Oh, that, I'm sure that's fun. Yeah. So it, yeah. so this this yeah so this is a gun game in the arcades, but it's a mouse game on this. Yeah, that's gotta be. Yeah, because it doesn't say. Wow, that sucks. All right, I'm gonna go my favorites. Uh, Symphony of the Night. Gonna have to be the Mega Man game, like X4. Right. And. Um, probably Pandemonium, which is a pretty cool. Uh, 2.5D. Oh shit! Game, yeah, which yeah. which I like that. I'm, those are the kind of games I like. I like right. you know like side scrolling type so, of stuff. So so uh, Super Nintendo sequel, a NES game sequel, and Pandemonium. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, that's good though. That that that's the, that's the system. Though that but that's the thing about PlayStation. You get both. The thesis of this is with PlayStation, you got both. You got the two D stuff. You got the beginnings of the three D stuff. But it, Where vice versa, I don't know that you have both with N64. No, you don't. N64 didn't have. They jumped in with both feet. What well, name one 2D N64 game? And I know they exist, but by and large, not. I don't know. It's like Space Invader 64. All right, that is the Sony PlayStation. Pretty awesome system. It's great. Another thing I wanted to mention, guys, is that we are actually going to be at the Too Many Games convention, which you might want to check out. One of the main reasons I like to go to video game conventions is, seriously, uh, I like playing old arcade machines, and I like buying like retro video game merchandise. And this is a good video game convention for both of those things. So if you want to go to a con and not have to just buy games off of ebay it's really a good place to go and they have it's not like it's only going to have copies of top gun they have like rare shit there i found a lot of stuff for the nerd videos there um it's a really good convention if you want to buy retro game merch yeah, I, I love too many games uh, one of the things that's really big this year is if you're really into sonic the hedgehog uh, Crush 40 is going to be playing. Okay. And they did a lot of the Sonic music before. And James, Mike, and I will be there. Too Many Games is June 23rd through 25th at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center in Oaks, PA, which is just outside of Philadelphia. And if you're interested in seeing us there or any of the other things that are there, uh, look in the description below or go to toomanygames.com. One other thing I do want to mention before we before we end, I'm actually going to be playing video games live in front of the audience. So if you want to do that and catch us, we will uh, Cinemasker will be doing that live. So come on out and play some games with us. Yeah, that'll be that'll be um, in the back. Actually, there's there's three days, and each day is going to have a, a, a different event. Um, we're going to be playing games on Friday. Okay. Okay, and then Saturday. There's going to be uh, cosplay wrestling in that spot. Then Sunday, there's going to be the National Yo-Yo Competition. Oh, well, I'm going to that. Yeah. Forget watching you should me play see games. Those, you should see those guys. They're insane. <laughs> <laughs>